Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. Today is Monday evening, uh, Monday the 5th of October, and I trust that you are well and um, you're ready to say goodbye to this day and to entrust the night and all the problems of th this day, the unfinished tasks, the concerns, the worries, the cares of this day, we entrust them to the Lord uh, and we leave them with him because he cares for us. So let's begin our, our evening prayer. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God. How excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and honor, wrapped in light as in a garment. The sun knows the time for its setting. You make darkness that it may be night. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. When we send, when you, when you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will make music to my God while I have my being. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And just to say that canticle was taken from Psalm 104, some of the verses in Psalm 104. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And our collect for this evening. Kindle in our hearts, O God, the flame of love which never ceases, that it may burn in us, giving light to others. May we shine forever in your temple, set on fire with your eternal light, even your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. And our evening confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and the desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises, declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. And our psalm for this evening is Psalm 72. Psalm 72. <clears throat> psalm 72. Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. May he judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. May the mountains bring prosperity to the people, the hills, the fruit of righteousness. 
May he defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. He will crush the oppressor. May he endure as long as the sun and as long as the moon and through all generations. May he be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days, may the righteous flourish and prosperity abound till the moon is no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. May the desert tribes bow before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present him with gifts. May all kings bow down to him and all nations serve him. For he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence for precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given him May people ever pray for him and bless him all day long. May grain abound throughout the land on the tops of the hills made sway. May the crops flourish like Lebanon and strive and thrive like the grass of the field. May his name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun. Then all nations will be blessed through him and they will call him blessed. Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does marvelous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. This concludes the prayers of David, son of Jesse. Amen. This Psalm 22 uh, is one of those psalms that is regarded as um, directly messianic psalm. That is, it's speaking about the Messiah who is to come. In so many ways, it's uh, uh, the New Testament and the and the church history has always theologians throughout the church, the church in general, have regarded this psalm as a psalm of a prophecy uh, of the king who is to come, that is the true king, namely Jesus. The, the thing about this psalm is that um, this, it is very likely written by Solomon, even though it says at the end, this concludes the Psalms, um, the prayers of David. Uh, it's, it's, it's connected to David, but it's very likely written by Solomon. And there are some allusions to that in here. As a king, especially with the Queen of Sheba, we know that the Queen of Sheba visited Solomon and was impressed by his splendor and his and his wisdom and so forth. But it's really about the King Jesus, isn't it? Um, uh, for example, in verse four, he will crush the oppressor. Now, th now that's not just talking about the king who is going to crush his enemies. That <clears throat> David talks about that a lot. That's not what that is. I mean, it could be, but it's more than just he will crush his enemies. This is saying the king who is to come, this king, will crush his oppressor. That is the, you know, if you remember the, 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 the prophecy in Genesis 3.15 where the, the God said, the seed of the woman shall um, the, the serpent shall bruise his heel, but he will crush the serpent's head. And that's the idea here, is that the king who's coming, he's going to crush the oppressor. And the oppressor is the devil, is Satan himself. The king, this king, is going to crush the oppressor. Not just oppressors, but the oppressor, the one who oppresses us. And, and so on. So you, we see the, the, the messianic nature 
of the of this king justice he comes to bring justice uh he will defend the poor and and so on and so forth it's as you see a true king um i'll read the last um of tim keller's comment where he calls it the true king this king's reign is endless we are told in verse 5 and it's boundless in verse 8 but was that just ancient hyperbole no here the claims could not possibly be said of any earthly king the image of full harvests on the tops of hills and mountains where soil cannot support such growth verse 16 indicates a supernaturally renewed world this king can only be jesus putting ourselves under his reign brings supernatural life and growth now you see we were created to need to obey him as grass needs rain verse 6 and christ will eventually heal and unite everything in heaven and on the earth and under the earth we are told in Col colossians 1 all the old legends of a great king returning to put all things right find their fulfill fulfillment in jesus and that's what this psalm is about it's about a king who's coming who's going to bring justice he's going to put all things right and the nations will marvel at his greatness that's the king this is that king lord i live in a culture that demands i cede authority over myself to no one but it would violate your glory and my nature to not give you the lordship over my life henceforth i will willingly obey whatever you say and accept whatever you send whether I understand it or not. Help me to bow to your kingly authority. Amen. Amen. All right, and our New Testament reading is um, Mark, Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14, the first 11 verses. First 11 verses of Mark chapter 14. Now that pass now the now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper. A woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? she has done a beautiful thing to me the poor you will always have with you and you can help them anytime you want but you will not always have me she did what she could she poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial truly i tell you wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world what she has done will also be told in memory of her then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. All right, a few moments. Let's look at this little text. Jesus is anointed by a woman in Bethany. Now we know of two anointings in scripture and they're not all the same. Uh, we know in one case it was Mary, Mary Magdalene. And in this case, we are not given the name of this woman. We're just told that she came into the house of Simon the leper while they were reclining at the table. They were sitting on the floor. And um, 
This woman walks in with a very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on Jesus's head. Notice the difference. In the other one, it was on his feet. This one, it's on Jesus's head. And it's anointing Jesus, as it were, with the perfume. And I can imagine the whole place was smell of perfume. Anyway, Simon, the, the, the leper, or, oh, well, we're, we're not told it's Simon here. In another, in another gospel, we're told it's Simon. Some, so some of those present were saying indignantly, why this waste of perfume? It could be sold and give, and for, a, for a year's wages and given to the poor. Now, this is fascinating because what, you, what this text is saying, here is a bottle of perfume that is worth a year's wages. Now, sisters and brothers, that's not cheap. And if, you know, Simon and all the others there uh, recognize the value of this perfume. And for them, for you to pour, to pour, and I don't mean darb a little here and there, but to break the top and pour it on Jesus, for them, what a waste. What a waste of a year's wages. What a waste of perfume. This woman didn't see it that way. She poured the most expensive thing she had. She poured it on Jesus as a sign of her devotion and her surrender to him. Sisters and brothers, do, do, do you see the point? I mean, what is it that we have that is so valuable that we cannot give it to Jesus? This woman took, and, and, and some people will think it's a waste. What a waste. What a waste of time to go to church on Sunday. What a waste of time to give money to the church. What a waste of time to pray. What a waste. What a waste. Of course, if you don't see the value of this, it will be a waste. It's a waste of your time. You could be doing more important things with your Sunday morning than going to a church building for two hours. You see. You're wasting your time. These people are saying, you are wasting value of a precious perfume on Jesus. You see, Jesus says, no, 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 no. You are not even thinking about the poor anyway. You're just concerned about the money. And the fact is, she has done a good thing. Because she, Jesus says she's preparing him for his burial. But from the woman's perspective, she's doing this out of devotion, out of commitment, out of repentance, out of a, a sense of, of gratitude for his grace. She loved him so much that for her, the most expensive thing she had, she poured it on him. She broke the top. She broke the top and she poured it on his head and it runs down all over and it smells amazing. Judas didn't like this. And you could say this was the straw that broke the camel's back for Judas because he went out from that place immediately and started to make bargain with the Pharisees on how to to kill Jesus, how to imprison him. He clearly was offended. Oh, how dare you waste this? Can I just say, say so many times people are offended at the, at the devotion and the service we give to Jesus. For them, it's a waste of time and how dare we do it? And Judas was offended, very offended. Sisters and brothers, what is it that we have, you have, that is so valuable that you cannot give it to Jesus? May I just say, it's probably your life. He, probably the most, the most precious thing we have is our lives. We pour it out on him. We give him it all and we say, Lord, I surrender all to you. I give it all to you, just like this woman. Give all that she had. 
A year's wages, that's not cheap. That's a lot of money. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we are grateful for your goodness, your love, your mercy, your, your grace to us sinners, your amazing grace. And so, Lord, give us, give, us, give us the grace to be like this woman, to pour out the most expensive thing we have in our possession to you, to give it to you, to surrender it to you. It could be our family. May we surrender them to you, our children, our spouses. Maybe it's our possessions, our bank account. Lord, may we give it to you. Maybe it's our lives. Lord, may we bow before you and surrender our lives to you. Just like this woman comes with the most expensive thing she has and she pours it out on you as a sign of her devotion, as a sign of her love, as a sign of her gratitude. Lord, give us this kind of heart, we pray. Even as we come to the end of this day, may we pour out all that we have and all that we are at your feet in surrender. And Lord, we pray this tonight for ourselves, for our church, for our family. Lord, we bring to you all the cares of this day. We bring to you all the unfinished tasks. We bring to you the worries and the concerns of our hearts today, the, the bad news in the news. We bring it all to you, Lord. There's conflict in foreign lands. There, is, there are conflicts in families. There are conflicts between husband and wife, children and, and, and parents, conflicts, abuse, Lord, we pray that you will intervene in our fallen, broken world. Lord, even as I was reading, even in Christian homes, there is abuse and there is, there is hate. There is psychological and emotional and physical abuse of spouses. Lord, we pray that you'll intervene in those homes, in those families, and mend the brokenness and bring healing to those who are suffering and bring salvation to those who, who perpetuate suffering and violence and hate. Lord, we pray for husbands who abuse their wives, for wives who abuse their husbands, for families who abuse their children, we pray, Lord, that you'll intervene. We pray for your intervention. We ask, Lord, that you'll mend that brokenness. There's so much brokenness in our world. And even in Christian homes, we pray, Lord, that you'll intervene, we pray. And bring wholeness, bring salvation to such families and homes and lives, children, parents, husbands, wives, and even in the world at large. So Lord, we bring it all to you tonight and we entrust this to you. Those who are suffering from COVID, we remember them, especially Lord, we remember in Donald Trump tonight as he, as he recovered from this COVID. We pray, Lord, that he will recover and he will recover speedily. And we pray, Lord, that whatever lesson that needs to be learned through this, that he will learn this lesson. And Lord, you will use this opportunity to humble him and uh, take away that pride and that swagger and make him humble, Lord, we pray. In the same way you did to Nebuchadnezzar of old, you can do it to Donald Trump. And so, Lord, we pray that you he will recover, but he will be a new person. And his attitude will change, and his behavior will change, and his words will change, his rhetoric 
will be different. So we pray for him tonight. We pray for his healing. We pray for his well-being. And we pray, Lord, for those around him. Pray for his wife as well. We pray for all those who are around him who have contracted this disease. What's, pray for them, Lord. Bring them the healing. You know, he's the one mainly because he's so high-powered. And uh, But Lord, we pray for all those who, are con who have contracted this disease, especially around him. And even in our own country, people, you know, the people in our own government, we pray for them and parliament. And so Lord, we, we pray for the back of this disease. We, we ask, Lord, that, uh, that we may see the back of it soon by your grace so that we can get close to one another again and we will not fear, we will not be anxious about going out and taking public transport and meeting together in groups and so forth because, because by your power it will, it will be eradicated from our community and our world. So Lord, we entrust these to you tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's have a night prayer. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and rest tonight and forever. Amen. Have a good night, sisters and brothers.